Hi, and welcome to 5 Minutes with Phil, as we continue with Timothy, my son. In the 1990s, we visited Willow Creek Church near Chicago a number of times. Willow Creek was the vanguard for the seeker-driven model of church growth, with almost everything they did on weekend service designed to communicate with those who had not yet made a commitment to follow Jesus. As you'd expect, there was lots of criticism, as there always is when someone's trying something new, and they were very effective in proclaiming the gospel in very creative ways, and always with excellence. On one visit, I purchased one of their worship CDs entitled Ever Devoted, which included a song by Rory Noland. It says, I'm so tired of chasing worthless things. Seems they never satisfy. So disappointed. Groping for more, I'm left more empty than before. I'm crying out to be more intimate, to walk more deeply with my Lord. Whatever's standing in the way isn't worth it anymore. There's no other way I want to live my life than to live it devoted to the Lord, to belong to him, faithful to the end, ever devoted, devoted to the Lord. I'm through demanding all my problems be solved. Insist God meet my every need. I'm going to die to my selfish ways, lay myself down at his feet. To devote is to give all or a large part of one's time or resources. I don't think it's just the commitment. It's more than that. It's the level of commitment and the amount of yourself that you pour into the object of your devotion. It says a lot about you and a lot about what you are devoted to. Devotion has to do with priorities and loyalty. One Sunday night many years ago, Elsie and I attended a service at Center Street Church in Calgary. Henry Shore was coming to the end of a series on Revelation and was talking about heaven. He told the story of one young member of the church coming to him and asking, Pastor Henry, are there dogs in heaven? And Henry very thoughtfully replied, Well, the Bible isn't really clear about what animals will be in heaven. It tells us the lion will lie down with the lamb. So I'd say that probably, yes, there will be dogs in heaven. Then this youngster asked, Henry, Henry, Pastor Henry, are there cats in heaven? And without blinking, Henry said, no. There's a difference. We've had both cats and dogs over the years, and it's true to say that dogs have masters while cats have servants. Dogs have a level of loyalty that cats have never been accused of. Devotion is largely a question of loyalty and focus. So in one way, Timothy, be devoted and loyal to the word, reading it, teaching it, preaching it, as devoted and loyal as your favorite beagle. But in another way, One of my favorite Pixar movies, and there are a lot, is Up. You probably know it as one of the best opening scenes without dialogue ever. When Carl, the old guy, ends up in Paradise Falls with Roos, the young wilderness explorer, together they meet up with a dog aptly named Doug, who wears a collar which just allows him to speak. And Doug gives one of the most memorable lines in the history of cinema. Squirrel, if you haven't seen it lately, I'm sure it's on Disney+. Plus. What happens when a dog sees a squirrel? Everything else comes to an end. Maybe they're focused right up to that moment, but suddenly the focus is gone. But isn't that just like us? So much of the time, we lose focus. We get distracted. There's a new shiny object that has our attention, and it's hard to get refocused. I'm not at all what you would call a camera buff. Never have been. Give me an automatic camera and I'm good to go. When photography went digital, I began taking lots of pictures, hundreds and probably thousands of them, and every once in a while, one would turn out to be reasonably good. Now, for most of us, our phones are our cameras. And everything is so automatic, all we do is touch the screen a few times and we can get some pretty good results. I wish we were like that, but we're not. 
It's not like old style cameras, or sorry, it is like old style cameras. Even if there is an autofocus, the best results are going to be with manually adjusting everything that can be adjusted to get it just right. When we lose focus and life gets fuzzy, when you're not sure about the destination or the next step, take the words of Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 to heart. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. How do you do that? Colossians 3.16 tells us, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. 